Hi, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is the first of a series of videos that I'm making about using a computer program, what you see here called Mathematica, for ordinary differential equations, for understanding them and solving them. It's the first part of that series. It's also the first part of a sub-series about first-order scalar equations. We'll see what that means as we go along. In this video, I'm going to show you two Mathematica commands called dsolve and plot. dsolve will solve a differential equation, and plot will help me plot the solution to that differential equation. We'll also check the answer symbolically. I'll show you how to do that in Mathematica. This particular differential equation that we're going to consider is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a basic, pure antiderivative problem. It's really something that you'd even learn in a first semester of calculus but we'll be talking about it in the context of a differential equations class. Overall in this series, I'm going to go through the math pretty fast. I'm going to assume you're really in a third semester calculus class, maybe a differential equations class. I'm mostly focusing on how to use Mathematica for various things, and I'm not going to explain the math a ton, but I will explain it somewhat. Here's our example for this video. Three parts. First part says find what's called the general solution of this ordinary differential equation, the word ordinary refers to the fact that this is a, an ordinary regular derivative as opposed to a partial derivative. There are partial differential equations. Also called an ODE for short. Here it is, dy dt equals t squared. This is what's called, or what I call at least, a pure antiderivative problem. You are looking for a function that will solve this equation. You are looking for a function whose derivative with respect to t is equal to t squared all the time. If you've got some calculus knowledge, you, you should be able to figure out what the answer here is pretty quickly. Let's take a second to think about it. The answer is going to be t cubed over 3 plus c. That will be the most general antiderivative of this function t squared. That will also be the general solution of this differential equation. Let me repeat myself very quickly. In this equation, you are looking for a function whose derivative, y is going to be a function of time, whose derivative dy dt always equals t squared. That's what this equation is asking you to do. The answer is going to be the integral of t squared, the indefinite integral, t cubed over 3 plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. That will be the general solution of this. But now I want to get Mathematica to solve that. d solve is the basic Mathematica function that will solve differential equations. How do you type the equation in? You type it in with primes. y prime of t is the prime notation for the derivative. It represents dy dt. When you solve equations in Mathematica, you need to use double equal signs. So I type two equal signs. That's needed whenever you solve equations in Mathematica. And I'm setting this equal to t squared. I'm solving for y as a function of t, and in Mathematica, function arguments always go inside square brackets, not parentheses. So I'm putting square brackets around the t there. I'm putting it here, too. And then I have one more argument. These arguments are separated by commas. That argument is to specify that the independent variable is t, just in case I had some other letter in here, <clears throat> and I was not trying to find, and that other letter might represent a parameter, a constant, and I'm not trying to find the uh, solution with respect to that other variable. So here we go. I can enter this. How do you enter code in Mathematica? Well, you need to make sure your cursor is on the given line. It doesn't matter where it is. You can see this cell over here is specifying that this is one line of input. It doesn't matter where you put the cursor. On a basic keyboard, if you do a shift or turn, that will enter this code and spit back the answer. There it is. t cubed over 3 plus c. Don't worry about the fact that this says c of 1. You can kind of ignore the one that's put in there in Mathematica because some, for some other kinds of differential equations, you might have a couple of arbitrary constants, a c1 and a c2. But this is saying that the answer is t cubed over 3 plus, 3 plus c. Because this is a pure antiderivative problem, we could also solve it by doing an integral of t squared. In this writing assistant, which I can get to, through the palette menu, I can also use what's called the basic math assistant. There is a button that allows me to do an integral. You see it right here. I need to make sure I'm ready to do a line of input. I need to click on there so I see a horizontal line that tells me that it's ready for input. I'm going to click on this button, type the function t squared here like this, integrating with respect to t, so I'll put a dt there. Now enter this again, do shift return. There we go, t cubed plus th over 3. 
Where's the C? Well, as a default here with an indefinite interval like this, Mathematica doesn't bother putting the plus C. It assumes you know that you should put the plus C. That's something to know about Mathematica here. The answer is T cubed over 3 plus C. So this is part A. This is the answer to part A. How about part B? Part B is an initial value problem. That's what it's called, or IVP for short. I'll add that in here. We're not only considering the differential equation, dy dt equals t squared, but we're also considering what's called an initial condition, y of 0 equals negative 3. We want the solution, the unique solution, to this system of equations, this initial value problem, to also go through the point whose coordinates are t equals 0, y equals negative 3. Spend a moment thinking about that. Hopefully you see that when t is 0, this function becomes 0 plus c equals c. So in order to go through the point whose coordinates are 0, negative 3, which is what this means, c must be negative 3. The answer is going to be t cubed over 3 minus 3. Can d solve solve that as well? Yes, it can. Now I need to consider typing in both equations, both the differential equation and the initial value, both times with double equal signs, and also put inside what's called a list in Mathematica. Notice the curvy braces here, right here and right there. That's a list. This is a list of two equations, the first of which is a differential equation, the second of which is an initial condition. Then put a comma, then put y of t, then comma t, just like before. Do a shift return. There we go. Oops, I made a mistake. That should be a t squared, sorry. There's our answer. Uh, this is the answer. If you multiply the one-third through, you're going to get t cubed over 3 minus 3. You can take that an answer and also expand the one-third through, multiply it through using the distributive property. If I embed this in an expand, it should do that. Yep, it does, to give us the answer t cubed over 3 minus 3. All right, as a final thing here, well, okay, I wanted to also show you how to symbolically check this. Um, this again here. There we go. Um, I can call this, give this function a name. I can call it y of t if I want. I think I'll call it f of t, however. Well, no, I'll, I'll call it y of t. t cubed over 3 minus 3. I'll type it in like that. Notice that when you define functions in Mathematica, you must put an underscore after the variable. That is essential when you define functions. I also make a habit of putting a colon equals here to define a function. That's not essential. Um, it's called a set delayed operator. Don't worry about what that means. But this underscore here after the variable right here is essential. I've entered that function. I can see it by typing y of t now. I don't need the underscore there, and I see the function spit back at me. I can now calculate the derivative and see that it do does equal t squared, as you already know, by typing y prime of t and entering it. As a final thing to do now, we'll plot this function as well as the function t squared, its derivative. We're going to graph the solution as well as its derivative with a basic plot, and we just want to see that t cubed over 3 minus 3 really is an antiderivative of t squared. The derivative of t cubed over 3 minus 3 is equal to t squared. Visually, we want to think about slopes. So I'm going to plot both functions. The basic plotting command is plot. I'm going to plot both functions, so I put them in a list with two uh, entries in the list. I can type t squared as one of them. I can type t cubed over 3 minus 3 for the other, or I can type y of t since I've already defined y of t. <clears throat> and then I can plot this over some interval. I put a comma, and then in a list I put an interval specifying that t goes from one number to some other number. I can pick, say, negative 3 to 3. I like coloring these functions different colors. Another option I can add in here after another comma is something called plot style, capital P, capital S, then type an arrow by typing a minus sign and a greater than sign. I'll make the first one red and the second one blue. So the t squared, the derivative is red and it's the integral. The y of t is going to be blue. There we go. So the derivative of the blue should be the red. The slopes of the blue should be given by the values of the red. The slopes of the blue over here are positive. The values of the red are positive. The slope right there, instantaneously speaking, is 0. 
the value of the red is zero at t equals zero, and then the slope becomes positive again, the value of the red is positive. That doesn't tell you about specific slopes, you'd have to measure the slopes, say with a ruler even, to try to definitely estimate uh, the values of the derivatives more precisely, but that's giving you the basic idea that we really have found an antiderivative of t squared. t cubed over 3 plus c, for any c, we'll vertically translate this. When c is negative 3, we get this particular one that goes to the point t equals 0, y equals negative 3. And I'll end this first video there.